Well, we have finally reached Pax Tharkis, and we're going to find out more about what we're going to find inside next on a DM's Guide to Dragonlands. Well, what is up, everybody? This is the Techno Funk Boy, and this is the DM's Guide to Dragonlance. We, if you're new to this channel, we are uh, we are going uh, essentially chapter by chapter through the original uh, Dragonlance games and um, giving some uh, giving some thoughts on the modules uh, as well as some ideas on uh, on how to run them. Um, uh, in, in, in a, on occasions, we will we'll talk a little bit about. Um, uh, changing some stuff to to be more fifth edition compatible, um, but mostly, um, mostly we're just talking about how to uh, how to run these these uh, these amazing old modules. So we are reaching the very very end of Dragons of Flame. This is DL two. This is the second module in uh, in the Dragonlance in the original Dragonlance first edition series. Um, on the whole, uh, Dragons of Flame has a reputation for being a bit railroady, and um, it's not—it's not unfair. It's not unfair. Uh, some of our other uh, prior videos have have talked about, you know, kind of loosening up the railroadiness of it a little bit. Um, this dungeon is not really one of those times um this is uh this is actually a, a a fairly big place and uh with with several missions and several different approaches on how to accomplish that so we're going to get into that um dragons of flame is available at drive through rpg uh as well as the classics edition like in in and i would say if you if you're looking for a first or second edition version of this i would go with the classic edition it um there there are a couple of things that um, that uh, it, uh, it it passes over, but it is otherwise essentially unchanged. Um, and you get the first four modules all in the in a single book, uh, which is the the, ch the cheapest way to get a copy of this uh, uh, of this adventure. Um, I also find extremely helpful the 3.5 edition versions. Uh, this adventure is in Dragons of Autumn. The 3.5 edition ones, like the classics editions, compile four modules at a time, and so so you're going to end up with uh, with three three books um, instead of uh, instead of you know what was it 12 or something. Um, that is uh, uh, I, uh, the the 3.5 edition version uh, does a lot to um, present some new ideas, to flesh some ideas more out, to just kind of change some stuff that probably wasn't working all that great. Um, and and it really just kind of gives you two pers uh, two good perspectives on the same uh, on, on the same. Ed idea the same the same adventure and and it really kind of lets you either pick one or or it gives you a foundation to think about it to get uh to get another uh, another uh a version uh, uh as you would like it so let's talk about let's talk about pax darkus first of all so <clears throat> pax darkus is a gate it is a gate into the mountains, and this is the essentially the only trade route between the the pre-cataclysm dwarves, or I should say, uh, the the pre-dwarf gate wars dwarves, and the uh, in the peoples to the north. Um, it uh, it uh, it is the 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 inside of it kind of rise up on the two sides of the gate, and then at the top meet in the middle there is a kind of defense of last resort device that uh that is like um that that is this massive massive thing of granite that is designed when you uh when you when you set it off it blocks the gate and uh and it takes a very long time to get get it open again um and so that could very well play into this. Um, uh, and 
other than that, like um, the there's there's going there's some mines also that are going to play an important role in this, and. Um, as we get further, I realize I have not got given a spoiler warning yet. So uh, before we before we go any any further, before I spoil too much more, uh, <laughs> if you are a player who has not played this before, please depart from us now. Uh, I mean, go ahead, subscribe anyways. You come back to this once you've played it. But um, but send your DM this way. Maybe I, uh, maybe we can get some good discussion on this dungeon. Um, you are coming through the secret way. Uh, the, the the players are coming through the secret way, and so you're you're kind of entering into this 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 cavern, uh, in the basement area of one of the towers. So um, yeah, it, it's kind of the storage area that that's empty, emptying out. Um, and, and so, uh, so, so right away, there's there's going to be a threat of there are uh, uh, in this basement. There's a lot of stuff going on actually down here. First of all, there are there's the the, the women's prison. Secondly, there are some draconian guards, and then third, there are gully dwarves. So the gully dwarves, uh, the gully dwarves lived here. Uh, the gully dwarves kind of find wherever there is there. Are, there's abandoned things and just set up camp there, and so that's going to be a recurring theme. And so when the, the when the dragon armies got here, they just kind of put the gully dwarves to work. And so they uh, down uh, down here um, there there is a uh, a tribe. I don't, I think tribe of gully dwarves um, that uh, that they can encounter. But the first thing is going to be the draconians. So this is going to be the first thing that like the players are going to need to decide. Now they are they are in a very secluded corner of the basement right here, and so if they decide to dispatch these draconians, it is unlikely that other other guards will hear this battle in particular. But the approach of this dungeon, it, it, it really is, is how much are, how much noise are you going to make and how much, how much fighting are you going to try to avoid? Because you're going to be able to get a lot further trying to avoid the fights. Um, uh, but, uh, a lot of them are difficult to avoid and are going to, um, uh, are, are going to require the dungeon master to, uh, to, to kind of set, to kind of set a threshold where everybody's going to start realizing that, hey, there are, uh, you know, there's, there's enemies here. Like I said, it, it uh, you know, depending on what time of day that the, that they're getting here, it is unlikely that this particular set of guards are going to be relieved anytime soon. I kind of imagine that they just live there and they're just set to, um, uh, to, to guard down there no matter what. And so, uh, being in a, in, in a very, uh, you know, very secluded part of the basement, these draconians probably won't be found. But as a, as the dungeon master, you're going to need to decide that. So like the hallway guards, you know, might be noticed more quickly than these draconians, you know, um, just jumping everybody in in the upstairs corridors is, is probably going to get everybody on high alert very very quickly, and then you're going to need to you, you know you you're going to need to make the plan of you know okay so then I have all of these guards goblins hobgoblins draconians in the building what how are they going to go about uh, you know go about um, a problem like this or you know if they if they if they take out a hobgoblin. How are, are are they hiding the body? Or are they just leaving it there? Uh, these are going to affect. These are going to affect uh, how the others react. Um, now, you have the imprisoned women right there, and so this is going to be the first opportunity for the dungeon master to really point out using these NPCs that you know there's a couple of dragons upstairs, and if you go about with craziness, then that might not go well. Um, 
And as you just kind of, this is, this is a way to, you know, kind of give the players a heads up about all this. Um, <clears throat> the women are here. The men are in the mine. The children are in a completely different spot. And the children are the key here because it would be very, very easy to get the women out right now and go back through the Slaw Marie. That they're not going to do. They're not going to do without the, without the children. The men are not going to leave without the women and children. And so, um, uh, this is this is how this dungeon is structured. There's a lot of places you could go. There's a lot of things you could do. There's a lot of of little nooks and crownies that you can explore here. But there are three things that you need to do. Get the women together, get the children together, get the men together, hightail it out. That's it. Um, you, there's, uh, there's really no fighting required here, but you can. Uh, there's, uh, uh, it's, it, it could be a complete stealth mission. Um, and that would be it. Uh, and so the way your players approach this is completely up to them. Uh, most of these goals are in one tower and my players didn't go into the other tower at all. Uh, there are some fights over there. And, um, you know, like down here, the opposite tower where all the leaders are, they probably won't notice a fight as quickly, right? Um, so there's a lot of fights over there to be had. Uh, but my, my players com just completely skipped it. And that's totally fine. And that totally works. Um, <clears throat> The only other way that they could have entered, and this is only for small characters, is up the chain from the slomery up into, uh, up into the top level where they can actually spy on a lot of stuff from above. Uh, and, uh, and it's, and it's, it, it, it's really, really cool. So in the book, uh, uh, Tasselhoff and Fizban went up that way and, um, you know, made a mess of things, literally. Um, <laughs> but hey, it's Tasselhoff. Um, uh, but that that is for small characters, and so unless you have just a complete small party, they they are going to have to come up through through the cellar. Elistan is with the women there, and um, and this is is where you can have like he is very very near death, and so um, uh, this this is kind of a moment where he is very likely to be healed by a cleric, and he's going to come to his senses. Elistan was one of the uh, seeker leaders, but he will be converted uh, at this point. And in the next few modules, he's going to become a cleric of Paladine. And, uh, and, and so th this would be, this will be like, um, he may have been met in uh, like uh, in, in solace at the very, very beginning, but this might be, might be the, the first meeting, but this, this will be a good chance to really kind of get him, you know, uh, get his character developed a little bit. Uh, Seston is also here and is imprisoned. Um, Seston, your player, if, if, if you went with my ideas for the caravan battle, your players may have not even met Seston, but if they were locked up in the caravan, Seston is a gully dwarf that helps them. And so this is a chance that um, uh, they might, you know, they might be able to, to help help Seston out and get him out uh, and uh, and back uh, back with uh, with the party and all. Uh, and so um, be be a, be a nice uh, a nice way to return the favor. My party uh, my party was not captured and so never met Seston, so he was not here. Um, a couple of things that we need to we need to discuss in the throne room. The players can overhear Verminard really having it out with Toad. So Toad is the character who appeared at the very very beginning, had a fight with the players, and then was also leading the caravan out. Uh, Verminard is our dragon lord uh, here. Um, uh, in this is this is this is one time where uh, like our third our three point five edition I like more I, I like more because Verminard is scolding Toad here uh, 
uh, you know, for, for the debacle, the many debacles that Toad has had in his life, but does mention is like, well, at least I have that spy amongst them now. Uh, now in the book, um, uh, 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 Eben, uh, tries to cast doubt on Gilthanus. I, I don't like it. I don't think it works. Uh, Eben, we met in the last section right before the slumbery and he, is a spy for the bad guys, but he is with the party right now. I think this makes it too obvious, um, especially because if you if you follow the book's advice, Evan is going to be with you for a while now, actually, through the next two modules, uh, not directly with the party, but with the um, uh, with the refugees as a whole. And so, to cast too much doubt on him now, to, to cast that much direct doubt on him now, I didn't like. Now, I mean, granted, there's there's probably other NPCs um, with the party that Gilthanus might be there. Lorana, uh, Lorana is um, uh, if if she wasn't with you coming in, then she is in the women's prison and so can join up then. But they don't seem as shifty. And as obvious as Evan. We're going to get to what I actually did with Evan and the doubt that I cast on him early on. Uh, my party picked up on it immediately. Actually, way before there was even doubt. They just, um, uh, it, every time I have a charismatic character, the players just look at each other like, I don't trust him. And it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter. My party, they do that every single time. Uh, but the, but anyways, um, we're gonna get to that a little bit later about what I did with this dungeon. Um, I think that I think it's too obvious. Uh, the 3.5 edition just scolds him for the caravan debacle, and um, it's just it's really just a way to introduce Verminard formally. The players will know of him by now for sure. But this is our first introduction of what he actually is like. And so you can really kind of build that up as uh, as him being exceptionally cruel and and all. Um, the dragons. There are two dragons in here. Uh, there is Ember, who is Verminard's uh, dragon mount, and there's Flame Strike. And Flame Strike is one of the best characters in Dragonlance. If you've read the book, you no doubt remember Flame Strike um, as just. This amazing ancient red dragon. And like not in the not in the ancient way that dragons get smart uh, get stronger and smarter. In the ancient way that she is decrepit and blind. <laughs> okay. So um she fancies herself as the mother to all of the children. She is guarding the children's prison. And so, getting through her is the key to getting the children. And she, and we, we, we played her up. She was adorable. If I'm gonna put the link up here, but if you watched uh, my video on uh, on my Kinder taking a nap with a red dragon, that's this. That's that's what this is. And it was it's my favorite war story um, of of any game I've played. Uh, but getting through Flame Strike this. Uh, this um, very jealous, but otherwise kind old red dragon. And um, uh, is that's the challenge that that's the challenge to get the children out. And that's also the secret to defeating the dungeon, uh, which we're going to get to. Um, um, Ember, I did something else with Ember and now let's get kind of get into what like I did with Ember. So I, I mentioned, I, I mentioned this in that, in that same video about the kinder uh, having a nap with the dragon. I mentioned this part and I did not explain it. And I'm surprised I didn't get a lot of comments about it because my evil chromatic dragons polymorph. That is a personal thing for me. I don't, uh, I, I'm, I know that wasn't the case in second edition. I don't think it's the case in fifth edition either, but I did not look it up be uh, before here. But um, the idea was that they're too proud to go around in any other form. And so only the good dragons polymorph because of their pride thing. I think that's a, that's a neat idea, but I think it really for forms out this world more if the dragons polymorph. So Ember 
in the module is stuck in this pit. This pit like opens up, you know, at the top, but yeah, he just goes down there and sleeps. And I, in the book, I noted that Ember, uh, Ember has, Ember does not like Verminard. Uh, Ember was like all of, all of the, all the Dragon Lords get mounts, but they, but like, they're kind of suspicious of Verminard, and so they sent Ember there, yeah, to be his mount, but also to keep an eye on him, and also uh, because uh, Tychesis is, is looking for Barum, uh, uh, the Everman. And, and so, Verminard is sent there to command the armies. Ember is there to watch Verminard and also look for Barum. And so I'm like, uh, the way I, I, you know, uh, in, in the, in the novel, I should say, Scott, I, I, these are both books, both the module and the, in the novel, I should, I should clarify in the novel, like sometimes like Verminard brings in people, prisoners to question him. And so Ember always pays attention because it might be, it might be, it might be Barum that time. Um, I, you know, I kind of imagine, I, I kind of imagined him being a bit more active than that. Now he's got a ton of responsibilities, and so he can't dedicate a ton of time to this. But when he does have downtime, um, the way I imagine Ember is is polymorphing and walking, walking around and trying to get information. Um, I also imagine Eben. To not be a spy for Verminard, but be a spy for for uh, Ember. And so the way this plays out is that when Eben gets back uh, it, in my game, when Eben gets back into the dungeon and he goes to the women's prison, he starts asking about Barum. Do you know who this is? You know where is he? Do you know who he is? And the players are like, Barum, who's that? Um, and I had just Evan lie and say, hey, you no, know, Barum, Barum is this guy who betrayed us and got us caught by the Draconians. And that's why we got put in here in the first place. And I swore revenge against him. And, you know, with a good enough insight role, they can tell that he's withholding information. Okay. Um, but that that for that for me was the way to kind of get the players to realize there's more going on with with Eben than than they originally thought and but without without coming right out and saying there's a traitor amongst them i'm glad they don't know about the traitor um it's so that was my approach that also puts the other dynamic of Ember walking around and like, I, like, I, 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 I didn't imagine that Ember who has not been around, like, I mean, he, he certainly is old, but has not been around many different types of, of, uh, of other creatures or, or perhaps doesn't even care. And so he, he's, he's probably not, uh, not all that inclined to like be able to tell the difference between a, 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 a kinder and a child or a gnome and a child. Um, he might not be able to, you know, he probably wouldn't just automatically recognize these are newcomers, especially if they get disguised, uh, which the women will be able to disguise them. Um, and so there's a, there's a, uh, uh, you know, quite a bit, of, uh, quite a bit, of, of uh, quite a, quite a few ways that like your players can draw attention elsewhere, except if they get too close, and then uh, the sword worm slayer starts rattling. That that's the wild card, isn't it? That's the wild card, and that um, uh, really could. Uh, cause things to go off a bit. Uh, that makes the dungeon harder. It, it really does. Uh, uh, but at the same time, I, I think it really adds 
as an element. My players just flat out lied to him and said that they caught one of the children sneaking out and they were about to take him back. And um, Ember, th this was the Kinder. This was a, I, I, you, you should you should watch the story, but um, <sighs> the Kinder convinced Ember to carry her uh, to uh, uh, back to the nursery, and um, Ember fell for it. And it was so much fun. Um, and so, yeah, there's there's a number of ways to get out of it. Uh, thankfully, the the person who was holding the sword was actually like 40 feet away behind a wall. And so, they just stayed there. <laughs> you know, um, if you're going to do that to a player, to the players, I would at least let them know. It's like, you know, hey, legend said, if you get this thing close to a dragon, it will it will notify you. And we're not really sure what that means, but be careful. Um, uh, in that way, you're, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll figure it out by the end of this dungeon, but that, that might kind of set things off a little, you know, a bit quickly. Um, I, uh, Verminard himself is, uh, is, is fairly stationary. Uh, and so I, I really had like the only moving piece in this in particular was Ember, unless they made two noise that, that changes things, you know? Um, yeah, I, we're, we're used to, we're used to in video games that, um, uh, I, and I was, <laughs> I had some friends who were playing Baldur's Gate and I, and I tell them to, uh, uh, that if, if you run into a battle that you're having problems with then aggro like one of the bad guys and then pull back and only that bad guy will run the other ones will be like i don't i don't see anything there's nothing there's nothing going on there's everything's fine um you know that's that's not realistic and you know if you if you start hearing a fight guards are going to descend and so um there are there are uh, there are plenty of ways out of out of corridors, plenty of places to hide, and so it, it might be interesting what uh, what the how the players react to that. But um, the long and short of it is, they need they need to get the the women together, they need to get the children together, they need to reunite them with the men, and they need to get out. Um, I would if they don't find the device to cause the gate to collapse. I would, uh, with like a good history role, let them know that this is a thing that can happen here. Um, because that, that might be one of their strategies to get, to get free from the dragon, uh, from the dragon armies. Uh, and that would actually help them a lot in the next module if they do that. Cause it does delete, uh, if it does delay them for several days if they do that. But, um, once you get all of this, all of this going, if uh, uh, when, when you get outside, Ember will Ember will attack while Flame Strike is realizing that the kids are gone, uh, and she's going to break out of her uh, of her room and uh, in here Ember uh, threaten to attack the children or, or start to attack the children, and Flame Strike will attack Ember, and, uh, and that gives you a chance to escape. Um, my party got rather attached to Flame Strike. And, um, it was like, uh, you know, they're, they're like listening to this battle go as they, as they go into the mountains and they hear the death of one of the dragons and they know, you know, and, uh, and, and it, it turned out to be kind of a, kind of a nice, um, uh, a, a, a nice moment. Um, I, 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 Flame Strike as a character, I really, really like. And, um, one of the reasons, uh, one of the reasons that like I really let, Ember walk around and 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 be a character on his own is because I wanted I wanted Ember to have that same sort of personality and uh, that is because uh, I mean we're we're a couple modules away before the final fight with Ember and and I wanted you know I wanted that I wanted the, them to get to know him a little bit as as they're moving toward having that final confrontation. Um, they're going to descend into the mountains with a lot, a lot of refugees. And that is the topic of the next module. But we are not there yet. Um, dungeon Masters, otherwise, there's a lot of characters in this dungeon. Um, uh, a lot, uh, kind of a, a, there's a lot of square footage here in this, um, uh, in, in Pax Darkest. A lot. 
and it's not like a, a the slumbery was very small but had a lot of stuff going on in it pax Tarkus is very large and does not have as much per square footage going on in it as the slumbery but there's still a lot happening a lot of different encounters that could happen um a lot of just draconians like you know hanging out and eating or on guard duty uh, and hobgoblins and stuff and um, a, a lot of things that the players need to navigate and um, and so uh, I, I thought it was a really fun dungeon and it really it it, it really opens up and allows uh, allows the players to um, make a good strategy of what to do and in and, and how to accomplish it uh, I thought it was a lot of fun so this is where I ask you, if you do enjoy these videos, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the little bell uh, uh, icon to notify you. And um, we're going to get into, into the next module uh, here fairly soon. And there is a lot, lot to talk about in the mountains, which I thought was a brilliant part of this series, but very hard to run. <laughs> So we're going to get into it. Uh, I really do appreciate y'all. Please do. Uh, please do hit the like button. Please throw some comments below. If you're interested, a um, uh, link to the Discord is in there as well. We talk a lot about uh, role-playing games, uh, particularly Dragonlance. Um, I, uh, uh, I, I, I kind of um, stole the idea from somebody else in the, in the, uh, in the Discord server to uh, do recaps of 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 Dragonlance games there, so there's there's two of us that are recapping our games uh, in Discord, um, as well as a bunch of other stuff and notifications when when um, when material comes out. So um, uh, also, oh yeah, um, there's another. Uh, Go uh, uh, go to Discord because you're going to hear more about this because I'm going to be doing a stream, a, a Twitch stream, in the fairly near future uh, to talk about um, Lord Soth in the Domains of Dread. And, uh, and just to uh, just to kind of uh, uh, since um, uh, since he was not uh, since he was not actually mentioned in uh, uh, in uh, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Um, we can go through some of the material that should have been in there, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, and so we'll be announcing exactly when that's going to be very soon. I, there's a couple more things that I want to read about it uh, in, uh, before we do so. And um, But we're going to get into that because I, I, it's really, really interesting. Cool stuff. So we will catch you next time. I really appreciate it. Talk to you later.